Welcome back to the channel. It's your boy, Chef D, and I'm here to give you the winning ingredients for your Monday night football showdown we got going on between the New York Giants against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. This is a classic matchup between the Giants and Tom Brady, just in a different jersey. Uh, this one should get a lot of clicks because we got... They got the New York Giants we're talking about here. And I think they got a little hope this week, all right? Before I break down that and deep dive into this very intriguing game on Monday, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at MessageSD. And also sign up for the Patreon. As you can see right here, I have it up. You get day-by-day, -day, weekly, and daily write-ups on NFL and NBA. Uh, you get picks for each position. And you get betting advice all the way down at the bottom. If you have any questions or comments, uh, follow me, like I said, on Instagram, and I will contact you that way. That's much easier. Uh, a lot of people contact me through Instagram. It's just it's just more fluent, okay? Also, you can comment on Patreon as well once you sign up. Now, let's deep dive into this game. We got Giants are traveling to Tampa Bay, and they you know that they have Tom Brady's number. So let's see if we can find some some loopholes here, maybe some value as well. Let's start off with the captain position. Obviously, Tom Brady is going to be the first person we're going to talk about. This team, Tem the Tampa Bay, Tampa Brady Brady's, <laughs> the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Yeah. They are on a two-game losing streak. Week eight against the Saints, loss, and again week ten against the Washington Football Team. So. You probably will see a more reinvigorated Tom Brady, very determined Tom Brady. So, not saying they're going to lose, but this is going to be one of his number one efforts in a while, okay? Week seven was a previously good game. Miami, definitely he wanted to put um, his foot on the throat of his former coach in that particular game. Now you get another motivated game against the Giants. Tom Brady has been top tier. Throughout the most of the season, if you see some of these games at the beginning of the year, 32, 30, 31, and that 40-point game against Miami. So definitely we're going to have him in the player pool. Uh, right now, currently, fantasy points against quarterbacks allowed. Um, with the New York Giants, they, ha they have a bend but don't break defense. Um, if we're just looking at the numbers, they're 13th ranked, allowing 260 yards and 1.8 TDs per quarterback. Um, if we're looking at the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, fantasy points allowed to quarterbacks, they're a little bit worse because they're struggling in that red zone area. And that's the next person I'm going to talk about. They are 31st in that red zone area. So that is a positive for Daniel Jones. So we already got Tom Brady. Daniel Jones is another guy we're going to look at. He has some upside and prevents and presents a huge problem for the Tampa Bay defense because he's a dual threat, all right? He can throw the ball even though he's not as great sometimes, but he has a very good deep ball that they can utilize, and he has the legs. Look at these rushing attempts and numbers. 4 for 17 against the Raiders, four for, uh, 5 for 12 against KC, 8 for 28. He is always a threat to run. Ball security is a question mark as well, but I think he can create some havoc against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers defense. And he has some upside. They have no Sterling Shepard, but they have Kenny Galladay coming back. They have Kadarius Toney. They have Darius Slayton. They have enough weapons um, for this very injured Tampa Bay secondary to go up against. So it's going to be very, very intriguing. Two guys we're going to definitely have in our pools, Tom Brady and Daniel Jones. Let's move on to the next position, and that's going to be running back. Leonard Fournette is the number one running back for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And this is one of the, the spots we can definitely ex exploit on this New York Giants side. If we're just going at fantasy points allowed to running backs, the Giants are right here, 26th in the league, right here, 14th in the red zone. Like I said, they're bend but don't break, but they're allowing 109 rushing yards, 4.6 yards per carry, okay? And receiving 54 yards, uh, receiving two running backs on six receptions a game. So that... That's in the wheelhouse for Leonard Fournette, who's taken over, usurped Ronald Jones. And look at the work he did last week um, against Washington, 11 for 47, 
and had eight receptions, four, nine targets. Didn't get the end zone, but the production was there. Very, very key to have that type of production in the DraftKings format. You need someone that's going to get the rushes and the receiving work. He's going to be one of our top tier guys to have for Monday. Next, we're going to look at Mike Evans, okay? Mike Evans and Chris Godwin, all right? This is the one, two right here with Antonio Brown out with a questionable on Rob Gronkowski. Um, they're going to have to lean on Mike Evans and Chris Godwin. Mike Evans is going to be the red zone guy, and he presents a huge problem for that New York Giants secondary. Bradbury's a great solid corner, but size matters, okay? In that red zone area, the fade pattern is very hard to stop when you got a 6'6", six, 6'5", six, six, type of wide receiver that can go grab that ball at the high point. And he, he's done it week in and week out. Last week against Washington, one TD. Against the Saints, one TD. Against Chicago, three TDs. And before that, against Miami, two TDs. So you can definitely expect Mike Evans to be the first look that guy in that red zone, especially if Rob Gronkowski is going to be out. Tom Brady always looks for the biggest mismatch, and Mike Evans is that guy in the red zone. So we love him. Chris Godwin is going to be another guy we're going to talk about. He's going to be top tier, tier one um, in our lineup builds because he is the reception guy. Look at these target numbers, 8, 12, 11, 5, 11, all right? Since the absent, absence of Antonio Brown, he stepped up. He's been doing this year in, year out. Um, that's why he's an elite wide receiver. And now this is going to be the guy we're going to look to move the chains, okay? Seven receptions, eight receptions, eight receptions. I definitely want that kind of security in my lineup. The question is, will he get in the end zone? The past couple weeks, he's have. Uh, two out of the last three weeks, he's gotten that end zone. So that's another uh, boost here. It's going to be really, really uh, tough to have an, a nice lineup here because there's so many expensive guys I want to play. That's why all, the, all these guys I just said, they're all tier one. They're all tier one because they have that type of upside. No one I see right now that I can kind of definitely, definitely fade like I did in that game, um, the last game, the Sunday night football game with the Chargers and the Steelers. I said, hey, fade Ben Roethlisberger. He has a bad history, um, especially going east to west. He's one in seven against West Coast teams with only an 83 passer rating. So very, very bad. That's why I said fade him. This one, uh, I don't want to say fade Tom Brady because he does struggle against the Giants, but there's upside, okay, with all these plays. Next guy we're going to talk about will be Saquon Barkley. He has been cleared. He will play for this game. Don't disregard the questionable tag. That's going to go away probably once you see it in the morning on Monday. Um, but no matter the fact what the defense presents on the Tampa Bay side, because I know Tampa Bay's run defense is elite. If we're looking at Fantasy points allowed to running backs. Tampa Bay is currently ranked eighth, okay? 58 yards rushing, 3.5 yards a carry, but they are allowing 49 receiving yards. The thing is, Saquon Barkley, Saquon Barkley is a freak. He's the CMC type. He's Dalvin Cook type. This man is, it doesn't matter the matchup. He can exploit the defense similar to what he did against the Saints, and they have a very good defense. He came through with 13 rushes, 52 yards, a TD, five receptions, six targets, and 74 yards in that game and another TD. You can expect them to use him, uh, not sparingly, but maybe just a little more condensed. I think a key would be Devontae Booker. If he's out, then they're going to it's going to be all in on Barkley because currently Devontae Booker is questionable. Uh, we're not, they didn't give us a definite on him, but they have been practicing. If Booker is definitely out, then you can expect Barkley to get every single snap, okay? He's still going to be a guy we should focus on because he is the X factor for the New York Giants. If you expect the Giants to keep this close, not only is it Daniel Jones, it will be Saquon Barkley that's going to have to put up a very good performance. All right, and he's at a very solid price at 7,800 or 11K if you put him at the captain spot. All right, and then we can continue on with tier one guys. We're going to clear out this because there's still guys I have that I like that can definitely become that number one guy for tomorrow's slate. So we clear out, we clear out that pool. We're going to continue to go down. Now we need a wide receiver on the New York Giants side because obviously if you expect Tim Bay to score, Tom Brady to put up points. 
the Giants are going to have to put up points as well. Daniel Jones has some favorite targets. Uh, Kenny Galladay can be one of them. I have another a wide receiver that's going to be even better in mind. But Kenny Galladay is that big body wide receiver that can be similar to that Mike Evans type of mold. You've seen what he was capable of in Detroit with Matt Stafford. It hasn't really resonated here in New York, but this game can be the opportunity for him. Maybe as a very strong finish to his season with the New York Giants right now. So he has some upside at 10,500. I think he can be in the player pool. He's not a he's more of a tier two, tier three. All right. A love that I really, really like on the wide receiver side wide receiver side for the Giants will be the rookie Kadarius Tony. Okay, he will be peppered with targets against this defense. He has that breakaway speed. He has the agility. He has everything. All right. They made a good decision drafting him. Kadarius Tony, his big blow up game was against the Saints and the Dallas Cowboys. That Dallas Cowboys game was 10 receptions, 13 targets, 189 yards. That's a rare type of talent to have those type of games. And I think he can do something not close to that, but he can definitely have a breakout game against the Tim Bay Buccaneers because there are no other options for the Giants. Galladay is going to be the stretch guy. That mid-tier guy, since Sterling Shepard is out, will be Kadarius Toney. And I like, I love him at this price at 6800 Or if you're willing to pay up, he can definitely be a captain spot guy. All right, let's continue to go on down. Another one of the weaknesses for the Tim Bay Buccaneers will be that tight end. And we're looking at the rankings. Fantasy points allow two tight ends. Let's go and check down. We're going to flip the ranks. And the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are currently 20th in the league, allowing 55 receiving yards and six catches to opposing tight ends. Uh, the Giants do a little bit of a better job. They're 15th ranked, but there's more questionable. There's two options on the Tampa Bay side. It's more clear cut on the Giants side. Evan Ingram can be that number two option on the offense. He has back-to-back -back weeks with a touchdown against the Raiders and the Chiefs. He's coming on a little bit. He always had the upside. He has one of the best rookie seasons ever in tight end history. Um, him, Jeremy Shockey, Evan Ingram is up there, okay? And definitely he presents a mismatch against opposing safeties and linebackers on the opposing side. And I love him. This will be my number two wide receiver option on the Giants side. It'll go Tony, Evan Ingram, and then I would have Kenny Galladay. Um, obviously, we'll look at Daniel Jones as the option because he's the ball thrower and Saquon Barkley because he's an X factor. So let's continue down. If we're looking for another option on the Tampa Bay side, I, so, I spoke before Gronkowski is questionable. You have to wait on news for him. If he is in, then obviously... Take away the two tight ends I'm about to speak about and we're going to play Rob Gronkowski, okay? But the other options that they do have will be Tyler Johnson. He's the number three wide receiver for the Buccaneers. He's been very solid as of late, getting um, five targets against Washington, six targets against the Saints. He's stepping up since Antonio Brown has been up, uh, has been out. He has not gotten to the end zone. You want a little more production from there, but he is seeing an uptick in in targets okay so that's a positive he can be in the pool um defenses i want to stay away from that um yet again i no i really don't if i'm picking a defense i would pick the bucks defense because i the history of daniel jones um he is very turnover prone if we're just looking at his game log you go through it the opportunities are there excuse me, for defenses to take to take over and have a good game. Fumbles in three out of the last four games. They had one fumble against the Raiders, one fumble against the Chiefs, two fumbles uh, against the Rams, and three interceptions. So there's a lot of opportunity for a defense to actually put up some points and get in that end zone. So as long as you're giving me an opportunity, we're going to play them. Let's go to our next third tier of guys, since I already spoke about Ingram, Tyler Johnson, Tony, and Galladay. We're going to go to the Tier 3 uh, set of guys. Looking at, like I said, Buccaneers defense is a thumbs up. Kickers are viable between Suckup and Gano. We'll throw them in the pool. 
Um, a lot, both of these defenses, well, the Giants are bend but don't break, so you can expect suck up to kick some field goals. But Tampa Bay, as of late, has been struggling in that red zone, giving up touchdowns. All right, so I don't know if you want to play Gano. Uh, next would be the tight ends. That will be Cameron Bray, and that will be O.J. Howard. You have to flip a coin between these two. They they both get utilized. As of late, it's been Cameron Bray that's been coming away with more targets. And a TD last week, uh, he had one reception on six yards and, and a touchdown against Washington. Came through with two receptions, four targets, and 15 yards against the Saints. So that is on a positive note since Gronkowski is out. But you can really just focus in on Godwin, Mike Evans, and Leonard Fournette. You don't have to go there. If you need some salary saver at the at the end, then he can be an option. Same goes for Darius Slayton. He's the number three wide receiver on this team. Pretty much the fourth option if I'm going to add in um, Evan Ingram. And anything below that, um, if you see a game script where Tampa Bay is down, then Giovanni Bernard becomes that pass catching back. He can be a, a late uh, flex play. O.J. Howard is a late flex play. Like I said, they're, spl they're splitting work between him and Cameron Brait. Um, Cameron Bray, like I said, as of late, has been doing good. But O.J. Howard has some up games, like against Philly. He had six receptions, 49 yards, and a touchdown. It's really a flip of the coin. But I just want you to focus in on the Tier 1 and Tier 2 guys. Um, they have a lot of upside. Um, love Fournette. Love Barkley. Love Tony. Love Evan Ingram. And definitely love Tom Brady. All right? Focus in on those type of guys, Mike Evans, Chris Godwin, and then you can fill out the rest. But you're going to have to find a cheap guy, most likely, in some of these Atlanta builds. So you have to, so you can pay up for all the expensive talent that's going to be in this Monday Night Football game. All right. Let me know in that comment section down below if you have any other ideas, any anyone that I did not speak of for the Monday Night Football game. Uh, I'll get back to you in that comment section down below. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at MessageSD. And I'll be back with another video very, very soon. Peace out, guys.